What if I told you your old dingy Mac operating system could look brand new? Operators are standing by. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today is the day a lot of you have been waiting for. So today we are going to work on this 2010 mid 2010 15-inch MacBook Pro, almost 13 years old, and this is the third video in this series. The first video, if you missed it, was all about the contemplation of if we should even do anything with this laptop, if we should try to upgrade it at all. The second video was the actual upgrade, so we upgraded the RAM all the way up to 8 gigabytes. That's the most that this one supports. And then we put in a brand new SSD drive, made it nice and quick. And I've been using it, it's, it's running really smooth. But we do know that the problem is this 2010 only supports up to macOS High Sierra. So today we are going to address that. So unfortunately, updating this outdated laptop, outdated, in quotes, laptop, is not as easy as just going into the Mac App Store and downloading the newest version of the operating system and installing it straight from Apple. Apple stopped supporting these for a reason. They know that things may not run as smoothly as they want, so they stopped supporting it at a certain age. And I would say at this point, 13 years, I don't blame Apple at all. But still, there's a lot of people that have a machine like this that's still capable, and they want to la make it last as long as they can. So that's what we're going to be doing. So needless to say, this is not a Apple-supported solution. This is just the work of some awesome developers that are working on this project, and that project is known as Open Core Legacy Patcher. So this is what's going to allow us to patch the hardware to allow it to run newer versions of the Mac operating system. So if we look at what Open Core is, it says Open Core is a sophisticated bootloader used to inject and patch data in memory instead of on disk. This means we're able to achieve a near-native experience on many unsupported Macs. So these dudes are really smart, smarter than me. So I'm going to just sum that up in saying this is going to let us put new versions of operating systems on old hardware. So these guys have worked really hard to make this as easy as they can for us. So there's four basic steps to what needs to happen. The first step is easy. It says ensure whether the model is supported or not. So we're going to check that out to see what's supported and what's not. Second step is download and build a macOS installer. I'm going to address that in a second. The third is running their actual open core patcher app. This is going to do a lot of stuff for us automatically. And then the last step is going to be reboot and it'll allow us to install that operating system. So our first step here is let's look at the supported models page. And we've got all these different models of computers. So we're going to look at the MacBook Pro and we've got our list of of the identifiers here and then the uh, the easier to remember names so this is a mid 2010 and there's a couple different models within that range I happen to know this is a 6 comma 2 if you don't know which one your is then you just easily go up to about this Mac go into the system report and here it is right here the Mac identifier MacBook Pro 6 comma 2 so now that we know that, we can see what it says. It says, yes, it is supported for Monterey and older. So they are currently, at the time of this recording, working on Ventura support. So they have to do a lot of things to get some of the, the uh, patches to work to get things like trackpad and graphics card drivers and keyboards and USB ports, all that stuff they need to work on. So let's give them some time. We're, we're not worried about getting all the way up to Ventura right now anyways. I'll be very happy if we can get Monterey all the way up and running on this old computer. So we are supported, so step one is done. So step two is going to be to download and build the macOS installers. So it says here that you need a 16 gigabyte or larger USB drive. So I've got today a SanDisk 64 gigabyte, which is going to work just fine. And to do this, They've actually given us a tool right in their patcher to create a macOS installer. So we're going to go ahead and use that. Now, as a side note, 
I've recently released a video where I took and created this USB drive, which has four different macOS installers on it. So if you happen to follow that video and if you made one of these, then you can skip this whole step because this will work. But we're going to go ahead and step through it with this blank disk here. So the first thing we need to do is download the OpenCore Legacy Patcher, so the actual app itself. And that link is going to bring us right to GitHub, where we can find the, the GUI version of their patcher, which is real nice. It's, it's point and click. So we're going to just download this zip file. Now if you get to this point right here and you just see a spinning ball that just spins forever, then it's very possible that you just installed this version of High Sierra on your computer and you haven't updated Safari yet. So the version of Safari that came with the High Sierra, the most recent High Sierra image was version 11. And version 13 is the newest one that you can update to. So version 11, I had problems. I couldn't find these assets. But once I updated to version 13, then they populated in just fine. So I downloaded this open core patcher, which is a zip file. And my Mac automatically unzipped it for me. And here's the app right here. So I can keep it in my download folder and, and go ahead and run it from there. Or I can drag it into my application folder. I'm just going to go ahead and launch it straight from there. Now, because we downloaded this from a website and not from the Mac App Store, it's going to ask us, hey, are you sure you want to load You want to load this thing up? And we're going to say yes. Let's go ahead and open it. And here it is. So, see, it identified this computer as a MacBook Pro 6,2. So, this step right here is what we're going to do, create Mac OS installer. So, I'm going to plug in... The thumb drive first because it's going to build the installer and then it's going to look for a disk to put it on. I'm going to click that and I can use download macOS installer or if you've already downloaded it and it's showing up in your apps uh, application folder waiting to be installed you can use that but since we don't have it downloaded yet I'm going to go ahead and download and it's going to find which versions are available. So it shows here 11, 12, and 13. Now I know that 13 is not supported yet. This 12.6 is going to be the Monterey version that we're going to use. For this particular model, 13 isn't ready yet. So I'm going to use 12.6.1 and it's going to download and it's going to take quite some time because it was, what, like 12 gigabytes? So we're going to let that go ahead and download, and I'll be back when it's done. Alright, it looks like it's done downloading, and it says OpenCore Legacy needs the uh, password for the admin account. So we'll go ahead and give that. And I'm guessing this is adding the installer that it just downloaded into the application folder. At least that's what it says it's doing. So we'll let that copy in there. Alright, so that did take a little while. It took probably about two or three minutes. And I'll, I'll cut some of that out of the video so you don't have to sit through it. But don't be, a, don't be surprised if that takes a long time. So it says it's finished extracting to application folder. So now I'm going to flash the installer. So this is going to look for the installer. And we are going to install this Monterey version that we downloaded. And it found the USB drive. This is that Ultra 64 gig drive, so it found it. Needs the password again. And now it says it, it may take 30 or so minutes. So we're going to go ahead and let that flash that drive. Copy that installer onto that drive. And I'll be back when it's done. Okay, I'm not going to lie. That took forever. <laughs> so... Now that that's done, let's go ahead and install OpenCore to disk. So this is going to install the app onto the disk that we just created to help us boot that new installer that wouldn't be able to boot without this. So it built the OpenCore, and now it's going to 
install it to the disk and we want to install it to the same disk that we just created because that's what we're going to be booting with one more time with the password and there it is so now it's on the disk so it wants to notice if we went to reboot. So we're gonna go ahead and reboot and it says hold down the option key and select the EFI partition that it just created. So let's do that. Holding down the option key. And there we go. So here's our original disk. Here's the install and here's the EFI boot. So it wanted us to boot to that. And then once that's booted, it'll allow us to install Monterey. And there we are. So here's the installer. So we're just gonna go ahead and select that. continue and let's agree to the your software license and select the disk that we want to install Mac OS so we're going to put that on our internal SSD and now it's going to do its thing so I'm going to let this go ahead and install and copy and I'll be back when it's done so looky here, we are all the way into Monterey now, and we can verify that by going up to about this Mac and seeing here's our MacBook Pro 15 inch mid 2010 running Mac OS Monterey. So after a couple reboots and copying some file and rebooting again, I was able to set up the account just like normal tap, tap, tap through the install process, set the account name, and it brought me all the way here to the desktop. But we are not done yet. So we used the Open Core Legacy Patcher to create that thumb drive, that bootable thumb drive that had the installer. It also had the EFI boot sector that allowed us to boot into the installer, which we wouldn't be able to without that boot disk. So right now, if I was to turn this computer off and turn it back on, it would not boot up unless I had that thumb drive in there, unless I had that thumb drive with that special partition. So the last step is to get that partition onto the internal hard drive itself. So what we have to do is go back to the Open Core Legacy Patcher site, download the app if we need to download it again. So I've re-downloaded it. So we have to download it, change the patcher settings, build that open core settings again and then this time instead of copying that to the thumb drive we're going to copy it to the internal drive so let's open up open core legacy patcher and we are going to look at the settings here and the one thing that we want to change is show boot, boot picker so if we don't take this and turn it off it's going to come up every time we boot up the computer and show us the EFI sector. And we're going to have to select that. So I think by turning that off, we're, we're going to be able to avoid that. So let's return to the main menu. Build this patch again. And now it's going to let us install to disk. So now when we do it, we want to install this to our internal disk. So it automatically knows where to put this, which partition. It's going to ask us for a password. And there it is. So now we should be able to reboot without the thumb drive inside. And let's see if it brings us all the way through the startup without having to push the option button.
And look at that. We have completely rebooted without the thumb drive installed. So we should have just one more thing to do. So to review what we did, we downloaded the Open Core Legacy Patcher. We created that patch. We downloaded the installer. We built the bootable installer thumb drive using that tool. We installed the patcher onto the boot drive. Completely installed the operating system and then came back and rebuilt Open Core Legacy and installed that patch to the internal hard drive. So now the last thing, and this is in the post-installation page here, we did this part, is applying post-install volume patches. So any kind of patches it may need for the operating system, it's going to identify those for us. So let's go ahead and open that open core patcher one more time. and select post install root patcher and for this particular model laptop it says all available patches have already been installed so if you were doing this on a different model then it may have either a graphics driver or something else and then it would want you to like it shows right here there's an available graphics driver so it wants you to root patch that into your system. So we are done completely. And it's running very smooth. All right, so overall, this wasn't a very quick process. It did take some time. A lot of that had to do with the speed of, of writing to this USB drive and downloading all the stuff that it needed to download. But it's done and it's running. Now, I will admit that this is not something that, if you are afraid to mess with your computer, you won't want to do this. You can lose data, so definitely make sure you save off any data that is crucial to you before you start doing this. And there is some things that may go wrong along the way. The webpage for OpenCore Legacy has a section down here for troubleshooting. And they have a long list of things that may go wrong and what to do if it does. And also, this is a work in progress. So this app is always changing, always being updated. So make sure that you always check back here if you have any problems or if you want to update something else. So that is going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you made it all the way through the process without any problems. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give that thumbs up for it. If you want to see more stuff like this and stay tuned with more projects that I've got going on, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And other than that, thanks as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.